with those people that have registered. So we share them with those people that are registered and also those people that have attended, which are you yourself. So we don't use these for any marketing or promotional um, purposes. However, what we have started to do is we started to put a short up onto um, LinkedIn just for people to go and watch the longer version. So um, if you're okay with that, then that is great. If you're not, then happy for you to keep your um, camera off. We sometimes, not always, depending on the questioning, will also um, record the questioning or we will stop depending on what kind of questions are being asked. So again, we'll just look at the ethics of that and we will go with the flow. So um, welcome everybody to our weekly moment. It's Wednesday. Yes, it's that time of the week. I love it. So what are we talking about well we're always talking about humanizing transformation because that is our gig that is the area of specialism and focus and passion that we have here at adapter digital and in the dylan way academy framework so today what i wanted to do is i wanted to talk about something a little bit different last week we talked about quantum transformation versus digital transformation and today what i want to talk about is i want to talk about digital transformation in terms of it being flawed. Now, what do I mean? Well, when you think about digital transformation, I've got a couple of questions that I wanna ask everybody here. How have you experienced digital transformation? So this is not what you believe it to be. This is how have you in the field physically experienced digital transformation? What has it been for you in terms of it being a project or a program? Has it been good? Has it been bad? Has it been only about technology? Has it been data driven? What, you know, what, just, just think about that for yourself. How have you experienced digital transformation yourself? And, you know, if you want to pipe up and share something, if you want to pop it into the chat, then just let me know. I've also got a second question that I want to pose to everybody is this. What do you believe digital transformation to be? What do you believe it to truly be? And then, of course, the obvious thing is how aligned are those two things? Your physical, real life experience of being a part of or leading digital transformation and what you believe digital transformation to be. Are those two things the same? Are they different, connected? And how far is the gap between the two? And, you know, how does it make you feel, right? You know, does it make you feel frustrated? Does it make you feel actually quite empowered because it is quite aligned? Who knows? But those two questions are questions that I ask teams quite often. And more often than not, I get a disconnect between the two. Um, and I find that quite an interesting thing because everybody in the world is talking digital transformation these days, aren't they? And yet, when I pose those two questions to teams, uh, uh, project teams, data teams, people teams, there is a disconnect between the two in terms of the term digital transformation. And then you get something like this. Our trusted research organisation, Gartner, globally well known for you know, transformation and research around um, technology and data and the, you know, the, 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 where the world is going. And this is what we get, that digital transformation can refer to anything from IT modernization to digital optimization to the invention of a new business model. I mean, I don't know about you, but if that isn't a get out of jail um, sentence, I don't know what is. And then the clincher comes right at the very end. Thus, the term is more like digitization than digital business transformation. When I first read that, I was, what? I don't quite understand. You've just basically just made it even more complex than, um, than, than the beginning. So it feels very, very complex. It feels very, very disconnected. It feels as if it could be anything. And that is one of the things that I find to be the biggest flaw of digital transformation in its very foundational definition, which is what I call not the genie in the bottle, but the Google in the bottle, as it were, which is your wish is my command. Whatever you want through opinion and bias, digital transformation to be, you can go out there and you can find somebody that says that's what it is. 
which means that there is a huge element of confirmation bias there. And so much so, what I've done is I've done my own little bit of research today so that we can actually, um, you know, see, I, I, I know, Oliver, unbelievable, a eh? Gartner definition. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's like there is no definition in there. Look at what we've got here. We've got IDC, we've got CIO.com, we've got Accenture, we've got Enterprise, we've got big, massive organizations like IBM and Microsoft, all trying to define digital transformation. And everybody is saying something slightly different. Yeah, there's some themes in there. We can see some themes around customer focus. Clearly, there's always a technology focus, but it's all kind of, you know, what do you want it to be? You can find the answer depending on what you want. And if we've got strategic, you know, leaders at the top of our organization thinking that digital transformation is one thing, and then we've got operational experts in domain sectors and uh, departments in our organization thinking, is this because of experience, because of their world, then what we've got is we've just got a widening disconnect. One thing that I will say to you is that I don't mind salesforce.com I don't particularly mind their definition as much because I feel as if they have been a little bit clearer but also more encompassing it transcends traditional roles like sales marketing and customer service instead digital transformation begins and ends with how you think mindset we love that in the Dylan way engage with customers not before they give the standard spiel. So I actually like that. So that's a quote from Mark Benioff himself, the CEO of salesforce.com. The only thing that I would expand on that and challenge is that word customer, because really when you're looking at digital transformation, it's not just the customer. You've got the team themselves, you've got the employees. If they're not the customer, if it's the end user that is in the external consumer, customer you've got the community you've got partners suppliers you've got an audience value chain that really is part of this beginning and end in terms of how we think about and engage with all of them so um there you go really interesting isn't it so fundamentally when we are working on digital transformation what we tend to get is we tend to get inside people's brains different intentions and what we get out in the field in terms of practice, different manifested actions and decision making. So there's a gap. Digital transformation is flawed. And there's something else as well. I don't know whether you guys are aware of the um, digital transformation maturity framework but it's a very simple three level framework that is out there in the ether you can go to any web browser and google the digital maturity framework and you'll come up with the three levels of digitization digitalization and digital transformation yes yes absolutely we have this um and what i've noticed is i've noticed my own and i've coined it my little ai deficit there is a deficit between attention and intention. And I think this is where a lot of this kind of disconnect comes from, because we've got so many of these definitions out there, depending on who you are, and where your experience comes from, you'll have a bias towards that. And where you sit within an organization in terms of whether you've got a strategic and a leadership role versus an operational delivery role, yet again, there is um, the, 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 uh, the gap there. So what I've noticed is that a lot of people that are talking strategically about digitization are thinking and intentionally wanting it to be all about process. And yet when it gets given to delivery, it's about updating technology. So the actual attention of what we do is update tech because they know before we can think about process, we've got to update the tech. So the, there's an attention intention deficit there. When you look at the second level, the same thing happens. A lot of the time when you see st strategies and visions and leaders talking about digitalization, they're talking about how we're going to centralize data. They're talking about how we're going to become a data informed organization. They're talking about all of this kind of we're shifting towards this data driven 
um, system. And yet, when we go into the delivery of it, what we tend to get is we tend to get process simplifi simplification, robotic process automation, and the like, because the people that are on the ground that are trying to deliver on that intention know that what we have to attend to in order to get there is, is process simplification. And yet again, we have the same thing when we have these grandiose digital transformation uh, strategies out there that we've got this wonderful, you know, vision and strategy and executive summary that talks about how innovative we're going to become and, and how we're going to foster and support innovation and we're going to disrupt the market and we're going to build, you know, innovative products and services to market that are going to be so defined by difference. And yet, when that intention goes down to the field, what do we get? We get the understanding in, in, in the attention, in the operational side of the business, that we have to get our data sorted. We have to have the data to be able to use that data to create innovation, to be disruptive. So all of a sudden, we've got a very, you know, a, 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 a step change, a, a step lag in terms of what people's intentions are in their mindset versus what needs to be done in order to get there on the ground. So it's what I call the attention intention deficit. Quite an interesting thought, isn't it? So there's something else as well. So quick recap, out in the market, we can define digital transformation in any way, shape or form that we want because there's somebody there to conform, to confirm it. Secondly, when you look at that maturity model, we have that attention, intention deficit between strategy and delivery, between vision and operation. But there's also other things going on as well. There is this sense of, you know, the macro drivers that are around the world that we live in at the moment. And I say macro, there are many things that are changing around us and moving around us. But for us, in our framework, the Dylan way, what we tend to do is we tend to aggregate them into these three themes. So these are three macro themes of what's moving and, um, and what we should be focused on. The first one, of course, is the pace of change. And the pace of change for a lot of people will focus in on the pace of change vis-a-vis -vis technology and the pace of change vis-a-vis -vis consumer human behavior and expectation but more often than not outside of the workforce instead of inside of the workforce, which is sometimes a bit of a shame, but I think we're getting there. I can see Joanna that is on the, on the call today as well. So, you know, we're getting, we're getting there with the employee stuff, the workforce stuff, which is great. Then there's this sense of inevitability as well, you know, that we, we need to be aware of. And this sense of inevitability, this macro driver for us is that even if we were to do nothing, even if we were to stop everything, that we are spending money and resource on with regards to you know, digital transformation, transformation projects and programs, there is still an inevitability. You know, um, legacy systems are coming to end of life and contract. We are moving to different ways of working because of cloud. We are introducing new things. We are within our personal lives, moving into wearables and smarter technologies and more connected technologies. So there's a real sense of inevitability going on as well. And the final one, which is really important, is convergence. And convergence for me is Ah, well, I just, I, you know, it's so incredibly important because it's the convergence of what we do versus who we are. And those of you that um, are aware of or have heard of the fourth industrial revolution will know that the fourth industrial revolution that's been around now for well over a decade, I mean, two, two and a half decades, to be fair, is starting to wane. You know, the researchers and the analysts are saying we're coming towards the end of the fourth industrial revolution. But what is it? The fourth industrial revolution is all about us becoming more productive, more effective, more efficient in what we do. The machinery, the what, the structure, the project, the data, the technology, the what we do. And that's all fine. And we're still, in most of our transformation intentions and projects and programs, still getting our head around that stuff, right? Great. However, 
we've got something else that's happening at the same time. We've got what's called the fifth industrial revolution. Go to the World Economic Forum, Google, or in, go into a web browser of choice and search on the fifth industrial revolution. And what you'll find is you'll find a definition of a time that we're living in now, accelerated by COVID. So there's a big hint for you. That is about we are more conscious and we are more concerned about being purposeful and thinking about who we are as well as what we do. So the convergence bit is not just what we do becoming more productive and more effective. It's also about who we are becoming more purposeful and really aligned. So it's be we're becoming more human. So these these three macro paces, super, super important for us to consider. And there's a wee little quote there for you in terms of the fifth industrial revolution from the um, WEF of 2019. So it's so incredibly important. The other thing for us to be aware of as well is that trust arguably is at an all time low vis-a-vis -vis transformation, digital transformation. The gap between the you know, the, the, the leaders and the operational drivers of change within our, our business, the gap is increasing. In some areas, we are seeing glimmers of light and we can see that with our customers. But generally speaking, we still have a trust issue that we need to get hold of. And what does trust mean? Trust means that the human side of engagement and adoption is always gonna struggle if there is a trust issue. And the trust issue to be addressed best best is by nurturing and fostering role model leadership leaders to be stepping forward as who they are in terms of being a human in order that you know the early adopter being experimental all the things that they want our transformation to include they need to be they need to evidence this in who they are so that when the culture looks up because change comes knocking on your door when you're in a you know you might be in a customer service team and you're you're you, you know you're in a field office that is miles away from where the corporate executive team suite is even if they are working in a hybrid world and a few days at home you will when change comes knocking on your door you will look to the leaders to see can I see evidence of that are they walking the talk are you know can I trust in this change because I can see it in my manager in his manager in her manager in the leaders of the organization it's incredibly important for us to have that role model leadership so I guess the key thing is, is that digital transformation for me, and I wonder for you, can mean so many things, has become so decoupled from purpose, let alone higher purpose, and it's also very dehumanized. So I reckon it's flawed. And this is where we come into what potentially can we do about it. So I've got five things that I want to share with you today, five things that we work on within our framework that we help and support individuals, teams and organisations to do just to ensure that there is a real kind of, you know, alignment and, um, and a real sense of unitedness and community vis-a-vis -vis digital transformation if it is digital transformation at all. So I'm gonna share those with you and then hopefully what we can do is maybe open up to a little bit of a discussion to see how you think. The first thing is, which is the most obvious of all is clean things up and unite on a definition. And what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is get the honest understanding out onto the table. What is in the mind of our leaders when they talk about digital transformation, what is in the mind of the tech team and the digital team and, you know, the operational team when they're thinking about digital transformation and get things cleaned up so you've got, you can unite on a single definition. If you can unite on a single definition, if it is tech, let it be tech, but be united on that, not necessarily agreed, but be united on that. And then you are able to put things around it. You are able to add things to it. 
but we need to really clean things up. And this is one thing that I think is really important when I go in and consult on digital transformation with customers is clean things up. And Richard, you might have your own opinions on that when we come to a little bit of an, a, an open discussion. So this is a fundamental one. You know, if you're working on digital transformation or if you're going to start on a digital transformation with an organization, with your organization, just ensure that there is a united definition as opposed to an agreed definition. And if it's part way through, observe and understand that attention, intention, deficit and just clean things up. The second thing which I think is super important is ensuring that we don't take a non-linear approach. Oftentimes when I come across transformation projects and programs, digital transformation projects and programs, what I will see is I will see a propensity to look at what needs to be done now. And more often than not, yeah, that might have something to do with technology in order to open up data, in order for us then to work with the people to use that data in better ways and to help those people to use the tech, technology to inform and to empower different behaviours. So there's a tech moving into data, moving into people kind of flow that I sometimes see and it's one after the other and it shouldn't be and it doesn't have to be because what tends to happen there and I wonder whether there are some experiences that you might have yourself is that even even at the point of strategy when we're talking about data when we're talking about human capability what tends to happen is those things happen after get the tech in and then let's see what skills and capability we need. And whatever we've got left in the budget or whatever we've got left in terms of timeline, let's put it in there. Or it will be, it's, it's, it's the time to delegate out to somebody else in the organization. Now, what I argue is that we need to be doing these things concurrently. Right at the very start, at the top, if we've got all three of these things in our strategy, then what we need to be doing is we need to be using them and working with them in a concurrent way, tech and data and human, right at the very start with equal focus, with equal focus all the way through. So non-linear is really important for us when we're working on, um, on, on humanizing transformation. And the next thing is spread the message really clearly. It's super important, but we have to have visibility. Just as I said at the start, you know, with everybody having different ideas, you know, you can have anybody, somebody that is working in the finance department and all of a sudden digital transformation comes along and they might go away because everybody's connected to the internet and they might form their own opinion of what digital transformation is. And yet their manager has agreed that it is X, Y, and Z based on what they're working with the project team. So it's really, really important for us to spread the message and to spread a clear message right from the start. And we have this little thing in our framework, which is called Connect Four. And basically it's four elements of ensuring a clear message and ensuring a message is spread. The first one is making it visible, absolutely making it visible for people. And what you can do to make a message visible is to, to, to explore different channels. People might be informally chatting on Teams, but they might also be using email. So thinking about the different channels you've got and ensuring that you're using all of those different channels. The second thing that you can do in terms of you know, visibility is not just relying on, 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 on narrative. It's not just relying on words typed. You, what you can do is you can draw pictures. Yeah, you can create infographics. You can create videos. You can organize conversations between people to talk about the message. It's so incredibly important. So just making sure that people are able to see um, that is incredibly important and that they're hearing it is the second part. And what I mean by them being able to hear it is, uh, those of you that know my work uh, will know that I say, when you are tired of a message, it's usually when the other person is hearing it for the first time. 
just because you've sent one communication out to the organization doesn't mean that they're on board. It doesn't mean that they've heard it. So it's really important for us to be consistently repeating messages. And the rule of thumb is somewhere between seven and nine times. It's incredibly important. The other thing as well is, is getting people to feel it, getting people to sense that it's really happening, to sense, to trust it. And what is really uh, uh, cool that you can do here is working with the leadership team to take key elements of the transformation strategy and to translate them into what we call belief statements. And if your leadership team has got belief statements, then what they can do is they can use it in their narrative and they can start to talk about it, not necessarily do things so much because that's the next bit, but they can give people a sense of trust in it because it's in the narrative and they're saying that they believe it in it. So there's a real sense of feeling it, really feeling it from a leadership perspective. Very, very important. And the fourth in our Connect Four is experience it. Listen, digital transformation, ultimately, we want everybody to be involved, don't we? So the doors should be open right at the very start. And one thing that I always encourage is I always encourage non-hierarchical and cross-functional work. Make sure that everything is open. Make sure that it is transparent. Give people the opportunity and permission to be involved in transformation, to come and sit in meetings, to be a part of prototype workshops, to be early adopters let people in and try it and play with it and get into the sand pit of digital transformation right at the very start. It doesn't have to be just for these people. Somebody from finance can help with the building of a mobile app that might be used for field workers, for a sales team that are out in, in, in the field all day. It's okay because the more cross fertilization you get, the more understanding you get, the more humanizing you are making your transformation. So that's the four, the connect four ways that we can spread a message wide and also make that message really clear for people. The penultimate element is co-ownership. Ooh, this one's a toughie, eh? especially when you're thinking about governance and, you know, um, leaders of an organization that have got a portfolio of responsibility. And that happens a lot for us, particularly in highly regulated sectors and public sector. But this is really important. Co-ownership. It kind of hints at the second um, element that I talked about, you know, in terms of making sure that things are non-linear. But really be thoughtful about where the ownership of digital transformation sits because you can bet your bottom dollar that if if ownership sits within technology or IT even if the strategy is across data and people the organizational human system will will join the dots correctly or incorrectly so it's incredibly important for us to try and create a sense of co-ownership Digital transformation doesn't have to be owned by one department, one sector or one person. It can be co-owned and should be co-owned and also fluid. So when you've got real humanized transformation, when it's really co-owned, what that means is that we are able to, just like in cycling and when you're backdrafting, you've got somebody that does all the work at the front and they are leading. And the people at the back are backdrafting because they're having a little bit of a rest, but they're just getting on with being as part of the race. And then they rotate around. So when it's time for the people side of the business to take the front and the technology or the data or you know any other element that is within your strategy to take, you know, to take a back seat, then it's really important. So being able to give fluidity so that we've got that is really, really, really important for us to understand that sense of fluidity. How do we put that into our governance? How do we, how do we enable our governance and create adaptive, agile governance so that there is a sense of co-ownership and that we can enable and identify that fluidity? And then the final one, just because I can, is go quantum. So those of you that weren't here last week for last week's weekly moment, last week was all about 
is it time for us to actually think about going quantum in terms of digital transformation and leadership versus that traditional sense of, of, of digitization? And really what I'm talking about there is I, I picked up on three things last week. So the first thing I picked up on was this sense of non binary which is a real you know really interesting thing it speaks to the the non-linear that i mentioned earlier on if you look at traditional computing everything is a, either a zero or a one it's on or it's off it's right or it's wrong and we've kind of adopted that in our behaviors these are the digital transformation it's right or it's wrong we're going to do that bit or we're not going to do that and it's always this kind of like you know it's a trade-off between a yes or a no a right or a wrong or do this or you know in favor of that but when you go quantum, you go non-binary, which means that you can do multiple things at the same time. So it speaks to that kind of non-linear bit, which is really, really great. I also talked about another two things, but I'm going to leave that for now. I'm just going to tease you with that one thing. And maybe what you can do is you can hop on to last week's replay or send me a DM and I will talk to you a little bit about more of what we mean by that going quantum. But going quantum does one thing for you, which is quite serious. It blows all of that confirmation bias out of the window. Because if you go to a web browser and you Google, if you think that quantum is something that it isn't, it, 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 you're dead in the water. You know, people have to, have, people are forced to unite on quantum because it's got that sense of difference and it's got that sense of newness. What do we mean by it? Let's be clear about it. So it there's a you know there's a there's a lot going for the idea of going quantum versus versus not. So those are the five things that are I think are things that you can do to reposition some of the flawed elements around digital transformation, and of course. All of these elements that I'm talking about today, everything that I'm talking about today is a part of our Practitioner Leadership Academy. That is a, an academy that brings leaders together, aspiring future leaders together, practitioners together in projects, programs, IT, data, OD, learning and development, et cetera, et cetera, into a single community to certify as um, Dylan Way practitioners. And that basically is the framework that is all about humanizing transformation. That's our uh, Practitioner Leadership Academy. And if you'd like to know more about that, then please do, um, you know, get in touch with me. And if you have a look in the chat, right at the top of the chat, you should be able to see that I've popped a chat in there and I will do it again so that everybody's got it. Uh, that's uh, my calendar, so you can organize a one-to-one, -one, one hour, absolutely confidential uh, conversation with myself, just so that you can get to understand a little bit about, you know, where you are now with your own digital transformation, uh, where you want to be in the future, and how potentially you can map some of the techniques that we use, which are, you know, 100 practices across seven mindsets and 10 principles, which create the Dylan way. So we can talk about that process, how you could get there potentially, and also a program that will maybe accelerate your ability to achieve your desired success. So five things in summary that we can do to remove some of that flawed area of digital transformation, we can unite on definition. Be okay with it, be honest with it, unite. Don't focus on agreement, don't force people to agree, but unite on definition. And if we need to clean up, clean up. Make it non-linear. Really think about things less in terms of step by step and more in terms of parallel streams genuinely connect for in order to bring clarity of message and breadth and spread of message co-ownership and fluidity again challenge governance and number five why not go quantum you know we can banana skins those of you that come to my weekly moments know that i always give us a little bit of banana skin hey what can i say there is always some things that we need to be aware of ourselves. It's great for me to give you five utopian things that you can do to remove some of the falseness of digital transformation, but equally there's things that we individually need to be aware of. And I call these the banana skins so that we don't slip up on these 
ourselves as modern practitioners. And the first one is willful blindness. And what do I mean by willful blindness? It basically means if you see something that's not quite, is a little bit flawed, but it's only a little bit flawed now, so it's okay. That's willful blindness. You're saying it's okay because it's small, so it doesn't really matter. Willful blindness is a phrase that was coined by a lady called um, Ma Margaret Heffernan. And there's a book called Willful Blindness there. Every time you are willfully blind, you have no idea how many other people are also willfully blind. And what happens is all of those tiny little things can eventually create one very big boo-boo, very one very big disaster. And there are some real life disasters that have taken human life based on willful blindness. It's something that we really need to have zero tolerance on when we ourselves are modern leaders and practicing um, humanizing transformation. And the final one, of course, is personal bias. I'm not saying remove it because we can't ever be non bias but to be aware of our own biases that might have come from our own experience, that might be just our comfort zone. Being aware of our own personal bias is so incredibly important. So what techniques can we do? Maybe a daily journal reflection at the end of the day, you know, in terms of how I acted, the decisions I made, just giving yourself moments to just check in with your own bias is so important. And those of you that uh, and know the 10 principles of the Dylan Way will know that one of those principles is practice makes progress. And if we can consistently expose ourselves to just little things like that, just keep checking in with personal bias, then we know that we will make progress through that practice. We will decrease the um, use of personal bias in our own decision making and in our, our, our own practices. Wow, so there we go. Is there a, bit of fr a better frame? This is my last thought for everybody today before we open up to a few questions and thoughts. Well, I do think there is. I absolutely do believe there is a better frame. And the better frame for me is the positioning digital transformation away from being a noun into something that is more based on identity, that we are becoming a digitally transforming team, system, organization, even a product, even a product, something as tangible as a product can still be framed around a product being a digitally transforming product because it allows us to have something which is infinite, has no end, can continue to adapt and iterate over time. So thinking about your own world, your own world of transformation, your own world of digital transformation, I wonder how that reframe might be possible for you in terms of noun into verb, allowing us to really hone in on that sense of there's longevity here, there's there's adaptive, there's no end to this. Uh, it is a journey, really important. And when we talk about digitally transforming as opposed to a digital transformation, what it does do is it creates profound opportunity and potential for humanization. We lean into the human story so much more naturally. It becomes something that is so obvious, whereas digital transformation can sometimes be quite, quite technical. There we go. So that's the end of my spiel.